Chapter One Hunting a Name of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. Hunting a Name. Little Bear cried, Boo hoo, boo hoo. He cried so hard that his tears fell into his bowl of bread and milk. The tears made the milk taste salty. What is the matter? asked Papa Bear. Little Bear did not say a word. He only cried, Boo hoo. Mama Bear said, Everyone teases Little Bear because he has no name. Why didn't you give him a name? asked Papa Bear. Mama Bear said, There were not enough names to go round. If you could look in and see the whole Bear family at supper, you would not wonder that there were not enough names to go round. There at the table sat Mama and Papa Bear and seventeen little bears. They all had bowls of bread and milk for supper. After supper, the bears played a game of tag and went to bed. They all went to bed but Little Bear. He sat in his little red rocking chair. Little Bear was crying softly, Boo hoo! At last, when the house was still and Papa and Mama Bear had gone to bed, Little Bear crept downstairs. He opened the door and went hurrying down the road. What do you suppose Little Bear was going to do? He was going to find a name. Little Bear could read very well, and by and by he came to an old sign. The words on the sign were partly rubbed off. There was only one word left. It was the word fire. Fire! Fire! That is a fine name, said Little Bear. I will call myself Fire. Pretty soon he met an old owl. The owl said, What is your name, Little Bear? Fire! shouted Little Bear. How do you know it is your name? asked the owl. Little Bear ran on, shouting, Fire! Fire! And all the animals in the woods awoke, and they came running with buckets of water. They wanted to put out the fire. Little Bear was so surprised that he did not look where he was going, and he ran right into an old bonfire and burned his dear little paws. All the Bear family came to help put out the fire. Little Bear went limping home. As he hurried along, the old owl called, When you want a good name, come to me. Fire is not a good name. To wit, to wit, to who, such a name will never do. Little Bear got home at last, and his mother tied up his paws. She put flour on them. It will help the burn, said Mama Bear. Little Bear did not like to see his paws white, so he licked off the flower. I will find a new name tomorrow, he said, but I will not ask the owl to help me. Then Little Bear went to sleep. He had a fine dream. He thought he found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He thought he tried to carry the pot of gold. It is heavy, he shouted. It is so heavy I cannot carry it. Little Bear shouted so loud he woke up. All the little bears woke up. What is the matter? they cried. Little Bear said he had been dreaming about the pot of gold. Mama Bear came in rubbing her eyes. She was so sleepy. Papa Bear said, It is too early to get up. Go to sleep again. They all went back to bed and fell asleep. Little Bear did not dream this time. End of Hunting a Name
Chapter Two A Walk in the Woods of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. A Walk in the Woods. Bushy Tail, the sly old fox, said, If you are my friend, you will go with me, no doubt, to the rainbow end. Little Bear was not allowed to go out in the woods alone. Next morning he said, I want to take a walk in the woods. Papa Bear said, You may go if Curly Bear will go with you. Curly Bear was Little Bear's youngest brother. Curly Bear and Little Bear went through the woods together. They each carried a little bucket. They were going to pick berries. Are you twins? asked the old owl as they passed along under the tree. Curly Bear shouted, I am Curly Bear, but he hasn't any name. Little Bear put his paw up to his face and cried, Boo hoo! Then the most surprising thing happened. Furry, the coon, came running down the path, and old Grizzly Bear came running along carrying his umbrella, and all the Cottontail family came running too. Where are you going? asked the two little bears. None of the animals stopped to answer them, so Little Bear and Curly Bear threw down their pails and ran too. On, 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 through the woods all the animals ran until they were tired. It began to rain a little, first a few drops, then splash, splash, splash. We shall have wet fur, said Curly Bear. Pretty soon there came a light in the sky, and there shone a rainbow. Then all the animals ran on again, faster than ever and the rainbow began to fade and fade until it became ever so faint. Pretty soon the rainbow was gone. What do you suppose those funny animals did then? They sat down in a circle, and each one whispered to the one next him. Curly Bear said, I wish someone would speak out loud so we could know what they are talking about. Just then, Bushy Tail the sly fox, got up and wrapped his tail about him and said, Ladies and gentlemen, the secret is out. We were all looking for the pot of gold at the rainbow end. Then all the animals shouted, Hear, hear, hear! Bushy Tail is talking! Curly Bear and Little Bear said they were sleepy and tired. So old Grizzly Bear left all the other animals talking and he took Curly Bear on his right shoulder and Little Bear on his left shoulder and went trotting merrily homeward. "'What is your name, Little Bear?' called the old owl as they passed by. "'By the way, what is your real name?' asked Old Grizzly. But Little Bear only hid his head on Old Grizzly's shoulder and cried, "'Boo-hoo!' Curly Bear said, he hasn't any name. We did not have enough names to go round. How many bears are there at your house? asked Old Grizzly. Curly Bear said, We have Mama Bear and Papa Bear and seventeen little bears. All this time, Little Bear was crying softly, Boo-hoo! Never mind, said Old Grizzly, when you find the pot of gold, you will find a name, too. Then Little Bear stopped crying and fell asleep. He fell asleep on Old Grizzly's shoulder, and pretty soon he woke up with a start. All the animals were running down the path. "'What is the matter?' asked Little Bear. Old Grizzly chuckled to himself, and Curly Bear said, Bushy Tail has stolen some cookies. 
all the animals were after Bushy Tail. But they did not catch him. He was such a sly old fox. What do you suppose Bushy Tail did? He hid behind a stone wall, and all the animals ran past. Bushy Tail had plenty of cookies to eat that night. End of a Walk in the Woods Chapter 3 A Kitchu of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. A Kitchu. Ding dong, ding dong, loudly rings the bell. Old Grizzly Bear is in the woods, and he has much to tell. A kitchu, cried Old Grizzly Bear. A kitchu, cried all the little bears. A kitchu, cried all the animals in the wood. Now, what do you suppose was the matter? They had all been out in the rain and had taken cold. My, how those animals did sneeze! Old Grizzly went out into the woods and rang a great bell. He rang the bell because he wanted to call all the animals together. Pretty soon, the animals came along, sniffing and sneezing and wiping their eyes. Old Grizzly said, When we look for the rainbow end, we all catch cold, so we must stop looking at once. He wants the gold himself, said Bushy Tail. He wants the gold himself. Old Grizzly said, If there had been a pot of gold at the rainbow end, it would have been found long ago. And why should we get wet looking for it? We will put it to a vote, shouted Bushy Tail. Put it to a vote. So they all voted, and all the animals except Bushy Tail agreed that they would rather stay at home when it rained. Little Bear did not say anything, and Bushy Tail whispered to him, We will keep on looking for the pot of gold, Little Bear. Little Bear felt very sad. He went home with Curly Bear, and he said, If I don't find a name pretty soon, I shall grow up and still be called Little Bear. Curly Bear kissed him on both cheeks and said, I will love you just the same. The old owl called after them, Little Bear, you can find plenty of names, but you cannot be sure which is your name. Little Bear cried, Boo-hoo! Just then, Susan Cottontail came along. Susan Cottontail was an old grandmother rabbit and all the animals loved her. "'You must not cry so much,' she said. "'Why not?' asked Little Bear. Susan Cottontail said, "'I have a great-grandchild who cried so much they named her Little Boo-Hoo. She would cry about everything. Nothing seemed to please her. When it rained, she would cry because she couldn't go out and play. When it was fine weather, she would cry because nobody came to play with her. She could not be pleased. You should take things as they are and be happy, my little bear. Little bear laughed then and said, May I go home with you, Susan? Susan said, Yes, if you will carry my market basket. Little bear took the basket and they went merrily down the road. At last they came to Susan Cottontail's home. They saw a light in the window, and Susan said, Bunny Cottontail is sitting up late to read. Do you like to read, Little Bear? Little Bear said, Yes, and they went inside. Bunny Cottontail was sitting up in bed, reading. Whom have we here? he asked. Little Bear made a bow. What is your name? asked Bunny Cottontail. We are glad you came. Susan Cottontail frowned at Bunny, 
and filled little bear's mouth with candy so he could not cry. Then Susan whispered something to Bunny, and he shook his head. I like candy, said little bear, and so does Bushytail. Bushytail likes cookies, too, said Susan. He takes them without asking. I have not seen Bushytail for a long time, said Bunny. Susan laughed. She said, Perhaps he will call tomorrow. Bunny Cottontail said, My fur and whiskers, where is my little red box? Susan looked, but she could not find the little red box. Bunny looked all over the house, and Little Bear was as good as he could be. He never once said, What is in the little red box? Ha ha! cried Bunny at last. Here it is. He opened the box and took out three chocolate candies. The candies looked like cigars. Have a smoke, Susan. Have a smoke, Little Bear, he cried. They all took the candy cigars and ate them. Little Bear was so happy he laughed until he cried. I am glad I am here, said Little Bear. I like this home. I like candy, and I like both of you. I shall come to visit you often. Grandma Susan Cottontail is sad as sad can be. She has lost her glasses, and so she cannot see. End of a Kitchu Chapter 4 Making Cookies of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. Making Cookies. Oh, oh, oh! cried Susan Cottontail. I have lost my glasses again. Susan Cottontail was always losing her glasses. Bunny and Little Bear looked all over the house. They looked upstairs, and they looked downstairs, but they could not find Susan's glasses. Susan Cottontail could not see a thing without her glasses, so she sat down in a chair by the fire. Bunny Cottontail had to get breakfast that morning, and Little Bear helped him. Little Bear went back and forth and called, Susan, where is the sugar? And, Susan, where is the salt? Just as they sat down at the table, someone knocked at the door. Little Bear opened the door. There stood Bushytail. He said, I want to come in. I must come in. I will come in. I do not mean mischief this time. With that, Bushytail came bounding into the room. He helped himself to a plate of cookies and began to eat very fast. Ha ha, he said, how I do like cookies. Bunny Cottontail was busy feeding Susan because she could not see to eat without her glasses. Pretty soon, Bunny laid down the spoon and said, Bushytail, what do you want this morning? Bushytail stopped eating cookies then. He pulled out a roll of paper from his pocket and read, Resolved that all the animals in the woods will help to start a newspaper. Resolved that Bushytail shall edit the same. Here, here, cried Susan. We are going to have a newspaper. Now, said Bushytail, we must all advertise in the newspaper for it pays to advertise. Bunny Cottontail winked and said, We might advertise for Susan's glasses. Susan Cottontail laughed and said in a whisper, We might advertise for a name for Little Bear. Susan whispered so loud that Little Bear heard, and he was so pleased with the idea of getting a name that he danced up and down and shouted, We will all advertise in the paper, Bushytail. Hurrah! cried Bushytail. We surely shall find a name for Little Bear. 
Susan Cottontail said she hoped her glasses would be found some day, and she passed Bushytail the cookies again. Bushytail said he must go and talk to the other animals about the newspaper. Bunny Cottontail said, "'Be sure to bring us a copy of the paper, Bushytail.' Little Bear ran halfway down the walk with Bushytail and said, "'Be sure to find me a name. Be sure to find me a name.' Bushytail went off laughing a short, foxy little laugh. I wonder what Bushytail was laughing about. You might put your receipt for cookies in the paper, said Bunny Cottontail. Little Bear said, Can you make cookies, Grandmother? Can I make cookies? said Susan Cottontail. Well, if you will find my glasses, we shall see. Then they all looked again but they could not find Susan's glasses. "'Let me make the cookies this time,' said Bunny Cottontail. They gave Susan a chair in the kitchen, and Bunny got a bowl and a spoon, and Little Bear helped to stir the cookies. "'Put in plenty of cinnamon,' said Susan, and Bunny put in the cinnamon. "'A kitchu!' cried Susan. "'A kitchu!' cried Bunny. "'A kitchu!' cried Little Bear. "'Do close the door,' cried Susan. "'We are all taking cold.' "'How about sugar?' asked Bunny. "'Put in plenty of sugar,' said Susan. Soon the cookies were all baked. "'Can I not make cookies?' cried Bunny proudly. Just then the most surprising thing happened. Susan took a bite of a cookie, and she began to laugh and sneeze. Bunny took a bite of a cookie, and he began to cough and choke. Little Bear took a bite of a cookie, and he cried, Oh, Ma! I want my Ma! We put in pepper instead of cinnamon, cried Bunny. Don't tell Bushytail, said Susan. He would laugh at the mistake. Then they all laughed. They thought it was a great joke for Bunny to put pepper in the cookies. End of Making Cookies Chapter 5 The Newspaper of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith The Newspaper The small bears at the table cried, We are sad, boo-hoo! Said Papa Bear, Cheer up, my dears, for this will never do. Mama and Papa Bear and sixteen little bears sat down to supper. Boo-hoo! said the first little bear. Boo-hoo! said the second little bear. Now will you believe it? In two minutes all the bears were crying. Hush! Hush! said Papa Bear. What do you suppose Mama Bear did? She got out sixteen little pocket handkerchiefs and told the little bears to dry their eyes. Papa Bear turned to the first little bear and said, What were you crying about? Then the little bear began to cry again. Boo-hoo! he said. I don't remember what I was crying about. Then the second little bear said, I remember what we were crying about. We were crying because we miss Little Bear. Then every one of those little bears shouted, We miss Little Bear. We want him to come home. Just at that minute, there was a loud knock at the door, and in bounded Bushytail. Bushytail had the newspaper with him, and he felt very proud. "'You have to pay me one dollar a copy,' he said. Papa Bear was so pleased to see the paper that he paid Bushytail the dollar without saying a word, and then he sat down in his big armchair and began to read. "'Read the advertisements,' roared Bushytail. 
Then Papa Bear read, Lost, a pair of mittens, finder returned to Bushytail. Lost, a pair of glasses, finder returned to Susan Cottontail. Then, what do you suppose those sixteen little bears did? They clapped their paws together and laughed and cried and shouted all together, Oh dear, oh dear, how funny! Susan Cottontail has lost her glasses again. Five dollars reward, read Papa Bear. The first little bear shouted, I want to find the glasses. And the second little bear shouted, No, I want to find them. And all of them made a dreadful noise. Then Bushytail roared, Read the next page. Papa Bear read, Wanted, a name for a fine little bear. Apply at the house of Susan Cottontail. Oh, 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 cried all the little bears. We know now where Little Bear is. Mama Bear wiped her eyes, and Papa Bear laughed until he cried. The little bears all capered about the room, then they put on their little caps and went by twos down the road. They said, We will find Little Bear. We will bring him home. The first little bear said, I will find Little Bear. The second little bear said, I will find Little Bear. Then all the bears shouted, We will all find Little Bear. And they went down the road, shouting and singing all the way. Bushytail was a very rude fellow, a very rude fellow indeed. He snatched the newspaper away from Papa Bear and jumped out of the window. Give me back my dollar, roared Papa Bear. We have only one paper, Bushytail shouted back. You pay one dollar to read it. Give me back my dollar, roared Papa Bear again. But Bushytail was far down the road by this time, and did not turn his head. Mama Bear said, He is a sly old fellow, but I am glad to know about Little Bear. Papa Bear nodded. I want my dollar back, he said. As Bushytail passed Bunny's house, he stopped and said, Give me a cookie. I must have a cookie. I cannot wait. Susan said, I have a whole pan full, but they are not fit to eat this time. I can eat them all, cried Bushytail. So saying, Bushytail snatched the pan of cookies out of Susan's paw and ran down the road as fast as he could. When Bushytail got a good bite of the first cookie, he choked, and he coughed, and growled, and ran until he found a stream and he drank a lot of water. Too much pepper that time, he said. I don't believe he will want any more cookies, said Bunny Cottontail. Susan shook her head. He will have forgotten by tomorrow, she said. End of the Newspaper Chapter 6 The Silver Dollar of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. The Silver Dollar. At exactly three o'clock, the furry people came, Grizzly Bear and Bushy Tail and others I could name. Little Bear woke up early next morning and went downstairs. Why do you suppose he got up so early? He thought that he would look for Susan Cottontail's glasses. Little Bear looked all over the house for the glasses. Susan Cottontail got up and called, who is downstairs in my house? Patter, patter, patter went Little Bear's feet. 
He came to the foot of the stairs, and then he set up a shout. What do you suppose made Little Bear shout? There stood Susan Cottontail, with her glasses pushed up on her nightcap. Little Bear crept upstairs and pulled Susan's glasses over her eyes and kissed her. Susan was so pleased to be able to see again that she said, "'You are really a very handsome little bear. It is a pity you haven't any name.' Bunny Cottontail gave Little Bear a hug, and they all made merry because Susan Cottontail's glasses were found. Bunny Cottontail made a big sign. He wrote these words on the sign. "'Wanted! A name for Little Bear!' Bunny tacked the sign up on the outside of the house. "'What did you do that for?' asked Susan. "'The animals will read about it in the paper.' Bunny did not answer. How could he? For his mouth was full of tacks. At exactly three o'clock in the afternoon, a great procession of animals began to come, and all of them brought names for Little Bear. There were so many animals that the house was full, and the yard was full, and still more animals came. The old owl sat up in a tree, and the animals began to shout names one after the other. Adolphus, Henry, James, Marcus, Augustus, and so they went on all afternoon. When it was sundown, the old owl got ready to speak. The old owl was very wise. He said, My dear friends, we can find a great many names, but how can we be sure any one of them belongs to Little Bear? Then Little Bear set up a great cry and Bunny Cottontail began to feed him a banana, and Susan Cottontail gave him a cookie, but still he cried. Just then, sixteen little bears came down the road, two and two, and Little Bear was so happy to see them that he forgot he didn't have any name, and he shouted, Goodbye, Bunny! Goodbye, Susan! Then he ran down the road as fast as his little legs could carry him. The sixteen little bears kissed him and hugged him, and the eldest brother bear carried him part way home. They met Bushytail as they went along. He swished his tail in a very proud way and said, Dollars don't grow on bushes, but Papa Bear has plenty of dollars to spare. All the little bears turned and chased Bushytail, but he was a sly old fox. He was too quick for them, and he soon disappeared in the woods. Little Bear suddenly gave a shout. Then all the bears began to shout. There in the road was something round and shining. Little Bear picked it up. It was the silver dollar that Papa Bear had given Bushytail for the newspaper. "'Give it to me!' said the first little bear. "'Give it to me!' said the second little bear. Then each of the little bears shouted, "'I want the dollar! I want the dollar!' Little Bear walked very fast. He held the silver dollar very tightly in his paw. He was afraid he might lose it. Little Bear said, I will give the dollar back to Papa Bear. I wish I had found it, said the first little bear. I wish I had found it, said the second little bear. Curly Bear said, Little Bear is right. He must give the dollar back to Papa Bear. Little Bear kissed Curly Bear, and they went on home. Patter, patter fell the rain. The little bears were cold, but they bravely dug away to find the pot of gold. End of the Silver Dollar
Chapter 7 Red Riding Hood of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. Red Riding Hood. Mama Bear was so glad to see Little Bear again that she gave him a great hug. Then Little Bear handed Papa Bear the silver dollar. Papa Bear was so pleased. He said, You may have a party. Then all the bears clapped their paws and danced up and down. Just then there came a great peal of thunder, and another, and another. Then all the little bears began to howl. Oh, 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 we are afraid of thunder. We are afraid of lightning. Mama Bear said, Off to bed, every one of you. Little Bear jumped up into Mama Bear's lap and the other bears all went to bed. The bears looked so cunning in their little beds. Pretty soon the storm was over and there came a beautiful rainbow in the sky. See the rainbow? whispered Little Bear. Do you suppose we could find the pot of gold? Then Mama Bear and Papa Bear and Little Bear all went into the yard one end of the rainbow seemed to come near their garden. Now what do you suppose those funny bears did? They all began to dig. They were looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Soon the other little bears woke up, and they all came out to see what was the matter. They had sixteen little shovels, and they all began to dig as fast as they could. Pretty soon they had the whole garden bed spaded up. Then it began to rain, patter, 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 and splash, splash, splash. The bears all ran for the house. My, but they were wet! Papa Bear built a great fire, and Mama Bear came with a big towel and they took turns rubbing off one another's wet fur. Just then, a great crash was heard. Oh, ow! Oh, ow! cried all the little bears. We are afraid of thunder! We are afraid of lightning! Do be still! cried Mama Bear. We must go and see what is the matter. What do you suppose was the matter? Bushytail had jumped through the front parlor window, and there was broken glass all over the floor. "'Who is going to pay for this window?' cried Papa Bear. Bushytail did not answer. "'I want my dollar back,' he roared. "'I want my dollar back!' Bushytail lashed his tail in a terrible way. The little bears were so afraid that they crept under the sofa and hid. I don't know what would have happened, I am sure, if someone had not knocked at the door just then. Papa Bear opened the door. There stood Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood wore a red cap and a red cape, and she carried a basket on her arm. Goodbye. I'll call again, shouted Bushytail, and bounded through the window and was off and away. Bushytail was always very shy with strangers. Little Red Riding Hood said, I will give you my basket of cookies, if I may stay with you all night. Little Red Riding Hood had lost her way. The little bears came out from under the sofa one by one and Little Bear was last of all to come out. "'I have seen you before,' said Little Red Riding Hood. 
"'What is your name, little bear?' Then little bear began to cry so hard that the others offered him some cookies. But he cried still harder, and they were afraid he would never stop. Little Red Riding Hood whispered something to him, and then he stopped crying. I wonder what Little Red Riding Hood said. Little Bear let Little Red Riding Hood sleep in his bed. He curled up on a rug on the floor. Little Bear liked to sleep on the rug. The rug was close to the fire. Red Riding Hood said, Are you going to sleep, Little Bear? Little Bear said, I'm going to roast some apples first. So Little Bear sat before the fire roasting apples. He ate one apple and gave one to Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood said, You are a very nice little bear. Thank you for the apple. Little Bear roasted another apple. Then he went into the hall. His soft little feet went pitter-patter in the hall. His soft little voice called, Curly Bear, come and get your apple. Curly Bear came down rubbing his eyes. Be quiet, said Little Bear. Don't wake the rest. I cannot sit up all night roasting apples. I must darn my stockings. Curly Bear sat on the stairs and ate his apple. Then he went back to bed. End of Red Riding Hood Chapter 8 Tell Us a Story of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Carolyn Francis Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith Tell us a story. Many fairies, I have heard, are dwelling in the wood, but I am sure none is so fair as Little Red Riding Hood. The next day it rained and rained. Mama Bear said, no one shall go out. So they all brought their chairs and sat by the fire. Please tell us a story, shouted all the small bears. Red Riding Hood began. I go out in the woods every day, and I have never been afraid in my life except once. That was when you went to visit your grandmother, said Curly Bear. Red Riding Hood went on. I tapped on the door, and the old wolf said, Come in. You said, Grandmother, what great ears you have, shouted all the bears. And, Grandmother, what great eyes you have, whispered Little Bear. I have almost forgotten about it, said Red Riding Hood. It happened so long ago. What became of the wolf? asked Papa Bear. The woodchoppers frightened him away, said Red Riding Hood. How is it you do not grow old? asked Mama Bear. Little Red Riding Hood blushed rosy red. She was such a sweet little girl. She looked very young in her short dress. I should think you would be afraid of the woods said Papa Bear. There is Bushy Tail. He is such a sly fellow. Red Riding Hood laughed. She said, None of the animals dares to harm me. I want a cookie, said one little bear. I want a cookie, said the next little bear. Red Riding Hood went to get her basket of cookies. The bears all followed her, and they set up a great howl. What do you suppose had happened? The basket was empty. Who stole the cookies? asked Mama Bear. And who stole the cookies? asked Papa Bear. Oh, 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 cried all the little bears. We want some cookies. 
We want some cookies. Red Riding Hood began to sing a little song. Who is it once went into the wood? Little Red Riding Hood. Who carried with her the nicest food? Little Red Riding Hood. Who gathered flowers fresh and sweet? Who did not fear the wolf to meet? Who roamed out in the green retreat? Little Red Riding Hood. While Red Riding Hood was singing, she was mixing flour and butter and milk and other good things together. She was making more cookies for the little bears. May I roll them out? asked each of the seventeen little bears. Red Riding Hood had forgotten that little bear had no name. She looked at him and said, What is your name? Two big tears began to roll down his cheeks, and his brothers and sisters shouted, He hasn't any name! He hasn't any name! Then Little Red Riding Hood whisked every one of those bears out of the kitchen, except Little Bear, and he helped roll out the cookies. Little Bear was so happy then that he stopped crying, and he and Red Riding Hood rolled out and baked one hundred cookies that day. Little Bear told Red Riding Hood that he hoped some day to find the pot of gold at the rainbow end. "'What would you do with the gold?' asked Little Red Riding Hood. "'I don't want the gold,' said Little Bear. "'But I might find a name in the pot of gold.' Red Riding Hood did not talk any more. She went on singing. "'I wonder if I could learn to sing,' said Little Bear. He tried to sing, but his voice sounded like a growl. "'Never mind,' said Red Riding Hood. "'If you cannot sing, you can roll out cookies.' All the bears said the cookies were fine, and Papa Bear said, I am glad Bushytail is not here. We have enough cookies to last a while. I am not sure that they will last, said Mama Bear. Then each little bear took another cookie, and they all laughed. End of Tell Us a Story Chapter 9 Aladdin's Lamp of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. Aladdin's Lamp said Mama Bear, "'Tis time for bed, that is very clear. Scamper off, as good bears should, a story you shall hear." "'It's time to go to bed,' said Mama Bear. "'I am afraid to go up in the dark,' said the first little bear. "'I am not a bit sleepy,' said the second little bear. "'Please let me stay up a little while,' said the third little bear. We are all afraid of the dark, said the fourth little bear in a whisper. Red Riding Hood said, If you are all in bed in five minutes, I will come up and tell you a story. Then the first little bear ran up the stairs as fast as his fat little legs could carry him. The second little bear cried, Good night, Pa! Good night, Ma! And all the little bears ran upstairs and got into bed as fast as they could. Red Riding Hood did not go upstairs for a few minutes. She was looking for her storybook. The first little bear cried, Oh, Ma, may I have a drink of water? The second little bear cried, Oh, Ma, please come and open the window. Then Papa Bear called, Hush! Be still! Red Riding Hood is coming up!" Little Bear was so sleepy, he fell asleep. Curly Bear woke him up. Little Bear said, Did they find the pot of gold? He had been dreaming again. 
Pretty soon Red Riding Hood came upstairs. She said, I cannot find my storybook, but I will tell you a story. What is the story about? shouted all the little bears. Red Riding Hood said, It is the story of Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp. This is the story Red Riding Hood told the little bears. Aladdin was a poor boy. One day he met a stranger. The stranger told him to build a fire for him. Aladdin built a fire and watched it burn. When the fire died out, he saw a stone and a ring. The stranger said, Lift the stone and go under the ground and get a lamp for me. Aladdin lifted the stone and went under the ground. He was in a beautiful place. He saw bright lights and many jewels about him. He put jewels in his pockets and in his cap. He soon found the lamp. Aladdin called to the stranger, Help me up, please. The stranger said, I will not let you up until you give me the lamp. Aladdin said, I want to keep the lamp myself. The stranger put the stone back in place and Aladdin could not get out. Aladdin did not know what to do. He wrung his hands and rubbed the ring which he had put on his finger. As soon as he rubbed the ring, a fairy appeared. The fairy said, You may have one wish. Aladdin said, I want to go home. The fairy took Aladdin home, and Aladdin soon found that whenever he wanted anything, all he had to do was rub the ring or the lamp, and the fairy would come. Whenever Aladdin wanted anything, he called the fairy. He grew very rich, of course. He married a princess and lived in a palace. One day, the stranger heard about Aladdin. The stranger still wanted the lamp. One day, Aladdin went away from home. The stranger bought some new lamps. Then he went about the streets calling, I give new lamps for old ones. I give new lamps for old ones. He came to the palace where Aladdin lived. He traded a new lamp for Aladdin's wonderful lamp. The stranger rubbed the lamp and wished that Aladdin's palace were in Africa. Aladdin came home. His palace was gone. He rubbed his ring and was taken to his palace. He rubbed the ring again and wished for the lamp. He lived happily ever after. Tell it again, said the first little bear. Where is the lamp now? asked the second little bear. Where is the magic ring? asked Curly Bear. Little Bear did not say a word. He had fallen asleep again. You must all go to sleep, said Red Riding Hood. Then all the seventeen little bears fell asleep. Curly Bear dreamed about Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. Papa Bear and Mama Bear both dressed up in disguise, and then they gave the little bears a very nice surprise. End of Aladdin's Lamp Chapter 10 The Two Peddlers of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. The Two Peddlers. Next morning, Mama Bear said, I must go to town to buy a new sunbonnet. Sure enough, 
The sunbonnet that Mama Bear wore was old and faded. "'May I go?' said the first little bear. "'May I go?' said the second little bear. Then all the little bears danced up and down and cried, "'May I go? May I go?' Mama Bear boxed their ears right and left, and Papa Bear said, "'It is really dreadful for you all to talk at once. I will go with Mama Bear to select her new bonnet.' Red Riding Hood said she would keep house and see that the little bears stayed in until Papa and Mama Bear came home. Mama and Papa Bear went down the road quite happy, and the little bears begged Red Riding Hood to tell them a story. So Red Riding Hood began. Once there was a little bear, and he took a little broom and swept the floor. Then Red Riding Hood handed the first little bear a broom, and he swept the floor. And she said again, There was another little bear, and he washed all the windows. Then she gave the second little bear a cloth and a bucket of water, and he washed all the windows. Then Red Riding Hood said, There were fifteen other little bears, and they all helped to clean house, so it was as clean as a pin when Mama and Papa Bear came home. You would have laughed to see those little bears running around cleaning house. They had a very happy time all day. Suddenly one little bear cried, I am hungry. Then the next little bear cried, I am hungry. Red Riding Hood said, You must wait until Papa and Mama come home. Red Riding Hood and Little Bear got the supper ready, and they waited and waited and waited, and still Papa and Mama did not come. Pretty soon a knock was heard, and there stood two old peddlers at the door. The peddlers had caps pulled over their faces, and they cried, Pans to sell, dishes to sell, laces to sell. They came into the house, and all the little bears danced about them. Then one of the peddlers took off his cap, and the little bears cried, Oh, Pa! And the other peddler took off her cap, and the little bears cried, Oh, Ma! Wasn't it funny for Papa and Mama Bear to dress like peddlers? They brought all sorts of presents to the bears. They brought candy and toys and seventeen little red caps. The little bears put their caps on and danced and capered around the room. Mama Bear brought a new cape for Red Riding Hood, and Papa Bear brought her a new hood. "'Where is Red Riding Hood?' asked Mama Bear. "'Where is Red Riding Hood?' asked Papa Bear. "'I'll look for her.' "'Where is Red Riding Hood?' asked all the little bears. They looked everywhere, but Red Riding Hood was gone. "'Perhaps she has gone to find the Sleeping Beauty,' said Papa Bear. "'Perhaps she has gone to see her old grandmother again.' said Curly Bear. Little Bear said, I will go and find Red Riding Hood tomorrow. Grandpa Grumbles in the woods is growing old and gray. He is a very lonesome bear. He grumbles every day. End of the Two Peddlers Chapter 11 Grandpa Grumbles of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith. Grandpa Grumbles Little Bear said, 
I will go and find Red Riding Hood. Papa and Mama Bear and all the other bears hugged Little Bear and kissed him goodbye and shouted, Don't get lost in the woods! Don't get lost in the woods! Little Bear was happy. He went off whistling a merry tune. He wandered about in the woods all day, and when night came, he saw a light and followed it. The light came from a very little window in a very little house. Little Bear went up to the door of the house and knocked. An old bear stuck his head out of a window and called, Who is there? Little Bear said, I am Little Bear. I am lost in the woods. May I come in, please? The old bear said, I am called Grandpa Grumbles. What is your name? Then Little Bear began to cry and howl and scream, and he made such a dreadful noise that Grandpa Grumbles had to come down and let him in. Grandpa Grumbles was such a cross old bear that none of the animals would live with him. He always grumbled about something. He said it was too hot or too cold or too wet or too dry, and he was never happy unless he was grumbling. Little Bear limped along into the house. His feet were sore and tired. He said, I haven't any name. Grandpa Grumbles took Little Bear into the dining room and let him sit up in a high chair at the table. He said as he passed Little Bear some cake, You can't eat your cake and have it too. Eat some cake. Then Little Bear stopped crying and ate some cake, and pretty soon he said in a whisper, Couldn't you find a name for me? Grandpa began to grumble and say, your ma ought to find you a name. If I find you a name, you won't like it. You know you won't like it. Then a gentle rap was heard at the door, and in walked Red Riding Hood. She had a basket of cookies and a pot of butter. Grandpa began to grumble in a very fierce way, and Little Bear was afraid he was going to eat Red Riding Hood. So he jumped up on the table and cried, Eat me, Grandpa! Eat me, Grandpa! I am young and tender! Then they all laughed, and Grandpa forgot to grumble, and Red Riding Hood took off her cape and hood, and she ate supper with them. Red Riding Hood came often to visit Grandpa Grumbles, as they were old friends. You have been gone a long time, said Grandpa Grumbles. Little Bear tried to say something, but his mouth was full of buttered toast and he could not speak. He is trying to talk with his mouth full, grumbled Grandpa. I would like some more cakes, said Red Riding Hood. Then Grandpa Grumbles shouted, Pass me the vinegar. I must have vinegar on my cakes. Red Riding Hood passed the vinegar and smiled so sweetly that Grandpa Grumbles forgot what he was grumbling about. Then Little Bear said, Red Riding Hood came to our house, and Bushytail came and stole the cookies. Then Grandpa Grumbles grew very angry indeed, and shouted, Ha! Ha! Bushytail stole the cookies? Well, well, he is no relative of mine. Someone ought to box his ears. Someone ought to box his ears. Then Red Riding Hood laughed, and Little Bear laughed, and Grandpa Grumbles laughed and chuckled and said, I will fix Bushytail. I will punish Bushytail. I have a present for him in my grab bag. Little Bear was so tired he fell asleep. Red Riding Hood said, He is the prettiest little bear I have ever seen. Grandpa Grumble said, It is a pity he hasn't any name. Bushytail is fond of cookies, so I've heard it said. He eats many every day and carries some to bed. 
End of Grandpa Grumbles Chapter 12 Little Rabbit Boohoo of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith Little Rabbit Boohoo Next morning, Grandpa Grumbles heard a tap on his door. "'Too early to get up,' he grumbled. "'Don't wake me up. Don't wake me up.' Little Bear heard a tap on his door, and he cried, "'See the sunshine?' He dressed and hurried downstairs. Little Bear never liked to be late to breakfast. Breakfast was on the table, and Red Riding Hood said, "'We will sit down and have breakfast, Little Bear.' Pretty soon a great grumbling was heard, and Grandpa Grumbles came downstairs one step at a time. He was talking to himself. "'Oh, dear, oh, dear,' he said. "'Have to get breakfast for my visitors.' When he came into the dining-room, he was so surprised to see breakfast on the table that he forgot to grumble. He sat down and drank his coffee without saying a word. Suddenly a crash was heard, then another, and another. "'I am being robbed!' cried Grandpa Grumbles. "'Wow! Wow! I am afraid!' cried Little Bear. Red Riding Hood started for the cellar. "'Get a candle!' she called. Grandpa Grumble said, "'I haven't any candle.' Little Bear said, "'I am afraid to carry a lamp.' While they stood there talking, Bushytail came bounding up the cellar stairs. He had a bottle of cider under each arm. "'I broke some,' he said. "'It is too dark in your cellar.' Grandpa Grumbles got a switch and ran after Bushytail. But Bushytail jumped on a sofa and shouted, "'Great news! Great news!' Of course they all stopped to listen. Little Bear said, "'Tell us the news! Tell us the news!' Bushytail said, "'Susan Cottontail has lost her glasses!' Then Grandpa began to grumble, and Little Bear rolled over on the floor and laughed until he cried. "'Have you any cookies for me today?' asked Bushytail. Red Riding Hood said, "'Why do you want cookies?' She had hardly gotten the words out of her mouth before Bushytail had started into the pantry and helped himself. Then whisk! He was out through the window and away as fast as his long legs could carry him. Just at that minute Little Bear heard a sound, and he said, "'Hush! Listen! What is it?' They heard a wee voice say, "'I am here! I am lost! Boo-hoo!' Grandpa Grumbles went to the door, and there sat the funniest little rabbit you have ever seen. "'Too many visitors. Don't come in,' said Grandpa Grumbles. The little rabbit said, "'Boo-hoo! Please let me in!' Grandpa Grumbles looked over his spectacles and said, "'What is your name?' The crybaby rabbit said, "'Boo-hoo!' "'That seems a rather bad question to ask around here,' said Grandpa Grumbles. "'Red Riding Hood, are you sure you have a name?' Red Riding Hood said, "'I know this little rabbit. She's a good little rabbit, but she cries so much they call her Boo-hoo.' "'Too many visitors, too many visitors,' said Grandpa Grumbles again. Little Bear went up to the rabbit and said, "'Don't cry any more. I haven't any name either.' Then the little rabbit dried her eyes on a pocket handkerchief, and Grandpa Grumbles shouted, "'Give them all some cookies, can't you hear me? Give them all some cookies!' "'Hush!' cried Red Riding Hood. 
Bushy-tail stole them all. Then they all shouted, Oh, ho! Bushy-tail stole all the cookies. Oh, ho! Bushy-tail is a sly old fellow. Off to bed, every one of you, shouted Grandpa Grumbles. And look under your pillows. Be sure to look under your pillows. Then they all scampered off to bed quickly, you may be sure, and each looked under his pillow. Now what do you suppose was under each pillow? Red Riding Hood found a cookie frosted with red sugar. Little Bear found a cookie frosted with blue sugar. The Rabbit found a cookie frosted with white sugar. And they all cried, Hurrah for Grandpa Grumbles! Three cheers for Grandpa Grumbles! Too many visitors, he answered with a chuckle. Too many visitors. Go to bed, every one of you. Then they all went to bed and had pleasant dreams. Red Riding Hood dreamed that her basket was full of frosted cookies. Little Bear dreamed that he had a very fine blue cookie as big as a fan. The little rabbit dreamed that she saw cookies growing in a farmer's field. Grandpa Grumbles lay awake a long time. I will surprise them all tomorrow, he said. I have many surprises in my house. End of Little Rabbit Boohoo Chapter 13 The Magic Cap of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith The Magic Cap Grandpa Grumbles in the woods has a grab bag, you know. You will find it there some day if to his house you go. Next morning, Little Bear got up to get breakfast, and he crept downstairs very softly, for he wanted to surprise the rest. When he got to the kitchen door, he met Red Riding Hood and old Grandpa Grumbles and the little rabbit. Each one had gotten up early to get the breakfast. Grandpa Grumbles began to shake his head and grumble, and Red Riding Hood laughed, and Little Bear waved his red handkerchief. Then they all shouted, Hurrah! We will get breakfast together! The crybaby rabbit said, Boo-hoo! I have never gotten breakfast in my life! Grandpa Grumbles looked at her and said, I will give you a better name if you will be still. Boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! said the little rabbit. I don't know whether I want a better name or not. Little Bear danced up and down, and he cried, Give me a name! Give me a name! Grandpa Grumbles said, No, no, look in the garret in my grab bag. They were all pleased at this, and they scampered up into the garret. There, sure enough, on a nail hung the grab bag. Time to grab, said Grandpa Grumbles. Every one of you must grab. Red Riding Hood put in her hand and drew out a gold watch. Keep it, keep it, shouted Grandpa Grumbles. It won't run, it won't keep time, but keep it, keep it. Little Bear put in his paw and drew out a silk purse. Keep it shouted old Grandpa Grumbles. It hasn't a cent in it. Then the crybaby rabbit put in her paw and drew out a piece of pasteboard to which was fastened a tiny bell. She was so disappointed she was ready to cry when old Grandpa Grumbles said, Keep it, keep it. It has your name on it. Sure enough, on the pasteboard was written in very large letters, Bonnie Bell. Little Bear tied the bell around the rabbit's neck, and she never was known to cry boo-hoo again in her life. 
"'May we grab again?' asked Red Riding Hood. Grandpa Grumble said, "'If I let you grab again, what shall I have left for all my grandchildren?' Just then, patter, patter, patter was heard, and Bushytail came creeping upstairs. "'Oh, ho! Grab bag!' he shouted. "'Let me grab! Let me grab!' Before anyone could say a word, that sly old fox put his paw in the bag and drew out a little red cap. "'Put it on! Put it on!' shouted Grandpa Grumbles. Bushytail put the cap on, and it began to pinch his ears. He cried, "'Oh! Ow! Take it off! Take it off!' Grandpa Grumbles chased him out of the house and down the road. Little Bear said, He will keep out of mischief for a while. Grandpa Grumbles came back chuckling to himself. What kind of cap did you give him? asked Red Riding Hood. Grandpa Grumbles said, It is a magic cap. It will not come off for a year. Oh, oh, cried Little Bear. How funny Bushytail looked in the cap. Bonnie Bell said, I am glad you didn't give me a cap. Red Riding Hood said, I would rather wear a hood than a magic cap. It is a fine grab bag, said Grandpa Grumbles. Then Red Riding Hood kissed Grandpa Grumbles on his right cheek, and Little Bear kissed him on his left cheek, and Bonnie Bell kissed him on both cheeks. Grandpa Grumbles was so pleased, he said softly, Nice little visitors, come again, please. They all laughed and kissed him again. End of the Magic Cap Chapter 14 The Pot of Gold of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith The Pot of Gold Little Bear is happy now, the secret he has told. For he has found the rainbow end and the pot of gold. Next day, Red Riding Hood said, I must go and see my grandmother. Little Bear said, I must go home. Bonnie Bell said, I will stay with Grandpa. Grandpa Grumbles was so pleased to think that Bonnie Bell wanted to stay that he forgot to grumble. Red Riding Hood put on her hood and cape, and Little Bear carried her basket, and they went merrily down the road. Soon it began to rain. Patter, patter, patter fell the big drops. We shall get very wet, said Little Bear. We shall see the rainbow, said Red Riding Hood. Sure enough, pretty soon, there came a beautiful rainbow in the sky. One end of the rainbow seemed to come in the hollow of a tree. Little Bear ran to the tree and put in one of his paws and drew out the pot of gold. Hurrah! he shouted. I have the gold. Then he opened the pot and sure enough it was full of five dollar gold pieces. Little Bear poured the gold all out on the ground, and Red Riding Hood began to count it. Suddenly, Little Bear set up a shout. What do you suppose he saw? In the bottom of the pot was written in large letters, For Little Bear, he shall have the pot of gold and a new name. He shall be called Mishi Mokwa, the Great Bear. Little Bear was so happy, he danced up and down and shouted and he laughed until he cried. Now I have a name, 
a real name. I am Mishimokwa, the great bear, he cried, and all this gold is mine. Little Red Riding Hood now said goodbye, and Little Bear and Curly Bear carried the gold home. "'What are you going to do with all this gold?' asked Curly Bear. Little Bear said, "'I will give some to Mama Bear, and some to Papa Bear, and some to all the other bears.' "'We shall be quite rich,' said Curly Bear. "'How much gold will you keep for yourself?' "'I will keep the pot,' said Little Bear. And he laughed, and Curly Bear laughed and they went trotting merrily homeward. "'Did you find a name?' asked Curly Bear. Little Bear nodded his head, but he whispered, "'Don't you tell yet, Curly Bear!' It was evening when they got home. Papa and Mama Bear and the Little Bears were eating supper. "'I never could tell you, if I wrote all day, how those bears hugged one another.' Papa Bear kept saying, Where did you find the pot of gold? And they all talked at once. It was a merry time, you may be sure. The little bears all sat down at the table and began to count the gold. Papa and Mama Bear and all the little bears counted. Each had a pile of gold in front of him. Suddenly someone cried, Where is Little Bear? They looked about but they could not find him. Where do you suppose he had gone? He had gone upstairs to hide the pot that the gold came in, the precious pot that held his name. Pretty soon he heard them all shouting his name, and he came bounding downstairs and he cried, Let us have a party, a party! So it was decided that all the little bears should go out next day and invite the animals to a party. Little Bear had happy dreams that night. He thought that the animals made him king of the forest. Once he woke up, and he was afraid he had no pot of gold. He was afraid it was all a dream. He crept out of bed softly so as not to wake the others. He found the pot where he had hidden it. The moon peeped in through the window, and Little Bear said, Old man in the moon, I am very happy. I am no longer Little Bear. I am Mishimokwa, the Great Bear. Said all the creatures in the woods, We are glad we came. Hurrah, hurrah for Little Bear. At last he's found a name. End of the Pot of Gold Chapter 15 Mishi Mokwa the Great Bear of Little Bear by Lara Rontree Smith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis. Little Bear by Lara Rontree Smith. Mishi Mokwa, the Great Bear. Next day, there was a great stir in the woods. The little bears went out to invite all the animals to their party. Mama Bear hired sixteen cooks to help her. She had so much gold now that she was quite rich. The sixteen cooks baked and stewed and boiled things all day. By night, all was ready for the party. King Cole, who lived on Primrose Hill, heard about the party, and he sent his three fiddlers so that everyone might dance. At six o'clock, the animals began to come. The Cottontail family, and the Grizzly Bear family, the Furry Coon family, and the Fluffy Ball family, the Redtail family, and the birds all came. 
Last of all came old Grandpa Grumbles. He was grumbling as he came along. This bag is too heavy for an old fellow to carry. It is a very heavy bag, but I wouldn't have it lighter, he said. They all set up a shout when they saw Grandpa Grumbles, and they ran to help him carry the bag. Now what do you suppose was in the bag? It was a grab bag, and there was a present in it for everyone. How the animals did enjoy that grab bag. After a while, supper was ready, and they had a fine supper. Then they danced and sang, and Little Bear told all about his travels and about finding the pot of gold. Just at this minute, Bushytail stuck his head in at the window. He still wore the red cap that pinched his ears, and he felt very cross. He shouted, Little Bear, what is your name? What is your name? Then all the company were very still. They felt sorry for Little Bear. Then Little Bear drew himself up very tall and shouted at the top of his lungs, I am Mishi Mokwa, the Great Bear. Hear, 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 cried all the company. But Bushytail would not be still. He cried, How do you know that is your name? Then Little Bear went and got the pot the gold had been in and read the words in the bottom. For Little Bear, He shall have the gold and a new name. He shall be called Mishi Mokwa, the Great Bear. The animals were all merry then, you may be sure. Bunny Gottentail cried, My fur and whiskers, but that is a grand name. They all shouted, Hurrah for Mishi Mokwa, the Great Bear. We will make him king of the forest. All the bear family were proud and happy. At last, they said goodbye with many hugs and kisses, and all the little bears were sleepy enough to go to bed. Mama Bear said, What became of Bushytail? Papa Bear said, I believe he ran away. What do you suppose Bushytail did? He was so surprised to hear that little bear really had a name that he ran away and was not heard of for many years. Did he always wear the red cap that pinched his ears? I don't know, for I forgot to ask him. End of Mishi Mokwa, The Great Bear End of Little Bear by Laura Rontree Smith